Oh, hey, well, hi there. Hi, Floyd. Hi. hi. Um, I'm going to grab some coffee and get out of here. See ya. Oh, oh. Dad made Mary and Mary pancakes. He says they're your favorite. Yeah. Why don't you join us? We've got plenty to go around. Oh, you're awful generous. I know what you're up to, and it's not going to work. You don't have time for breakfast with your family? Come on, Mom. I'd love to have breakfast with my boys. Okay. My sons, my children. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have no idea what a Mary and Barry is. I, I used to... <laughs> that's funny. I used to think it was it was the mayor of Washington, D.C., and your mother set me straight. You see, we, we went on a on a trip once to Oregon. Only yeah. once, because your father and the great Northwest, they just don't mix, you know. We got, we got stranded in a cabin in the middle of Willamette Valley, right? Just the two of us. I'm sure they're not interested in this story in the least. I you know? am. You're a sweet yeah. I want to hear the whole thing. Yeah, we want to hear the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like some butter? Is current bus coming in? No, Mr. Jax. She called and said she'd be at her place taking care of the workmen. Apparently the damage from the floods is pretty bad. Yeah. She said that you could reach her at her ex-husband's house and then on her cell. I wasn't sure if you remembered she was staying there. Oh, no, thanks, Tim. I... I remember. Rick. Everything okay? Yeah, there's, uh, there's something that's come up that you might be able to help us with an unforeseen complication. Sure, anything. The doctors have said that we can start chemotherapy. Well, that's great. Alexis has decided that she doesn't want to put herself through such a debilitating procedure. But the chemo can save a life, exactly. Oh, I should have seen this coming. Alexis is the most stubborn, controlling person in the world. Of course, she thinks that the chemo is going to leave her helpless. Yeah, well, she's going to be a hell of a lot more than helpless. If she doesn't take the chemo, she'll be dead. Well, I'll be a little more tactful when you made that point to Alexis. Alexis has decided to take care of this cancer in her own way, without chemicals. And no matter what the doctors or I or Sam or anybody says seems to make any kind of difference. So now it's my turn. Look, Jax, you and Alexis have a special relationship. She actually listens to you. So if you could persuade her to save her own life, I would be very grateful. You look better. You working? Research. On what? The latest fashion trends in Paris. What do you think? Before you say one thing, before you argue with me, hear me out. That's why I'm here. They let Christina in here. She stood right by this bed while I was in a coma with a tube hanging out of my mouth, drooling, trying to wake me up, and she couldn't. She's traumatized. I don't ever want her under any circumstances to ever see me like that again. Now, Christina has a lot of people that care about her. Right now, I'm worried about you. Do you really know what it means to refuse the chemotherapy? I don't want to die, Jax, if that's what you think. I want to live and I want to have hope. When they took out the part of my lung, they got the cancer with it. I understand that there may be some rogue cells running around my body wanting to attach itself to something, but there are other ways to fight it other than the chemo. I've, I've, been, I've been researching this. There's, there's positive imaging. There's touch therapy. There are at least six different ways that I'd have to go to Canada to get because of the FDA, but don't get me started on that. I'm not going through what I went through again. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. So I, I just need your support on this. I need everybody around me to just support my decision, all right? Is it my turn to speak? Good, huh? I love Dad's cooking. Yep, he's a keeper. <laughs> So, Michael tells me that Jax is going to take everybody out on, on his boat. Yeah, Jax loves his boat. That's why he gave it to me. He's always thinking up wonderful things to do with the boys. Fun, exciting things, right? It's because he's so good at so many things, like climbing and 
hiking and fixing things. I bet she could show Daddy a couple things to do with the hammer, huh? <laughs> I doubt that. How big do you say his boat is? 60 feet. That's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah well, my new boat is 80 feet. Yeah, why don't you go upstairs and brush your teeth? You too, Morgan, please. Don't forget your spelling homework if you turn that in today. I know, I have a word with your father. You want to talk about size? Let's talk about size. What about the size of your big, fat ego? You make me out to be the bad guy. No, I don't. You made me eat your stupid pancakes. Well, I thought you wanted to have breakfast with your kids. I do like eating with my kids. I eat every day with my kids. What I don't do is bore them with stories about Oregon and Marionberries. You, you, you love my pancakes. Come on. And there's nothing wrong with reminding our children that we used to have happy times, unless it stirs up feelings inside of you, and you don't want to get too close, because it, you know what I mean. Well, why were you bringing up that whole thing about your boat being bigger than Jax's boat? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just being honest. You know what? I'm sick of this competition between you and Jax. Using the boys trying to buy their affection, it's ridiculous. Well, there's no competition because I'm the father, I win. Don't think they don't see what's going on, son. Oh, they definitely see what's going on between you and Jax. And frankly, my dear, I don't like it. Oh, really? Well, you're not my husband anymore. I can see whoever I want to see. Well, you can do that. That's fine. I, as long as it doesn't involve my children. No, you have to stop this. It's not fair. You know what? You are just imagining.